Hey guys, welcome back to the shack. Been out here in the shop today working on something to kind of help me when I'm messing with these lasers and testing and doing some reviews. And I finally got it done. So we're gonna get back to doing a little more cutting and testing with the Atom Stack. All right, the machine that I'm using today is gonna be the Atom Stack A30. And it's gonna be the first one to try out my new designed uh, smoke table, which basically is like having an enclosure without having an enclosure. The whole objective is that this thing will sit on top of this uh, box of sorts and it'll help me control the smoke, keeping it out of the shop, but allow you guys to see everything that goes on in the machine as well as just keeping everything together. So I'm gonna move you over here and just kind of show you what this thing looks like. And we're gonna get doing, making some smoke with the uh, Atom Stack. All right guys, so there it is. Uh, this is the uh, setup that I've come up with today. And just to give you an idea of how everything works, uh, the bottom is basically just a really big smoke chamber. Uh, it's a two by four frame, so there's three and a half inch of airspace underneath the machine. Uh, this kind of also saves me for, you know, I lost two of the legs that goes with the machine <laughs> in the unboxing. So this kind of saved me from that as well. Uh, the way that this works is the machine is actually attached using uh, my jig panel. I've, I've created a jig panel. It is secured to the box, and then the machine sits in the jig. And I did another little piece here for the front just to hold this, this leg still so that it doesn't move. Uh, I do have the machine elevated slightly above normal, and that's to give me a little more room here on the, uh, the sides in case I need to slide a longer piece of material in there. I've kind of got a pass through of sorts underneath the machine. Now this is probably going to end up being the bottom of an enclosure, uh, but I was just kind of testing it and did it here. And if I do want to make this into an enclosure, all I got to do is add the walls and the top, put the hinges on it and I'll have myself another enclosure. But the way that this is set up guys is I'm using the uh, matrix cutting panel. It sits right here. All right. And if any of you are familiar with the matrix panel, it has little slits in it that are kind of secluded from being able to allow the laser to pass through, but it will allow air to be pulled through it. So basically what I've done is this box is pretty much uh, sealed up and the only place for air to be pulled in from the fan, which is over there running out that way, is through this cutting panel. So any air going into the box comes through the cutting panel and goes out, which is what makes it really awesome for cutting. All right. You pull the cutting panel out here underneath there i've got some storage for stuff that you don't mind getting a little smoky because it does get a little smoky under here uh the good news is the way that this uh thing is built you're not going to have any pieces of debris falling in there but you will have some smoke and maybe some small particulates and stuff so i've got the roller it stays in there i didn't make it high enough for the chuck to stay underneath here uh but but that's okay the chuck, chuck can be put in as needed. But I did run myself a lateral board right here. And what that is, is that's basically just a reference so that when I put the uh, rotary or the chuck in, I can kind of butt up against the edge of it. And that lets me know that it is square with the uh, gantry. So just makes it quick to be able to, to exchange. But like I said, I've got me a little box that I made. Got some of the other spare parts and stuff. I'm gonna keep those in here. This way they don't get mixed up with any of my other stuff and uh, I don't have to worry about them being in the way. And like I said, smoke is not gonna be, I'm, I'm not concerned with a little bit of smoke on them. So those will be just staying under there. So everything that came with this machine, every part of this machine is on this box now with the exception of the chuck. Uh, but when I get ready to go back to cutting, if I'm using the rotary, of course, this is the way that I would do it. When I get ready to go back to cutting or engraving, I just slide this guy in here and drop it down in the recess. Uh, also, since it, it does have one of my jigs on it, and I did, I did manage to space everything up high enough that I can still use my jig panels and such. So I can just snap those in, and now I've got my jigs up and working the way that I'm accustomed to. Uh, it took a little bit of uh, 
took a little bit of engineering to get it all to come together, but it worked. Uh, I'm really happy with it. I've been using it a little while now. Uh, I've had good luck. I also incorporated me a little small little cubby right here. Uh, I had to space this up. Like I said, trying to get me a little more clearance here. I spaced these up as well as the back. And that also got me up even with the teeth of the bed uh, with this surface here. So that anything long lays across here, uh, it'll be even with the teeth. But I, I decided that since I had this piece here and didn't need this for anything, that would make an awesome place to keep my little focus tool. It's in kind of a cubby so that it can't fall out or go anywhere. That way I always know where that is because I can just put it right back in the right back in my little cubby. So that's it, guys. That is the Clactical Smoke Table. And I'm going to put some uh, material on here and I'm going to run a burn and just kind of show you. One, we're gonna I'm going to show you how fast this thing cuts. And two, I want to show you that my little Frankenstein creation here actually does work. Got some material on there, and I've also went ahead and calibrated my camera since mounting it. Uh, the camera's still removable, but what I did is I basically made a little mount in the back back there so that you slide underneath it and tighten the nut down and it holds that in place. So what I'll do since today is really, really close to Easter is I'm gonna put me a little Easter design in my workspace here. I'm gonna move that down to where it's in the working area. I can also, because of the added height, I can, I can actually manipulate my material out the sides of the machine if needed, which I kind of wanted it to be able to do that for, you know, if I want to do a longer board or something. And so I can, I can kind of play with my positioning to try to use, you know, just the edge of my material and not waste a whole sheet with that big waste on the side. So, I'm gonna go ahead and frame this out. Well, let me hold the machine because I've been moving it by hand. Don't wanna have any uh, grinding going on. Uh, once I get the machine honed, frame this out. And I have been doing some other stuff, so I'm gonna confirm that I'm still focused. And the way you do it with this tool, guys, is you just turn it sideways and it's supposed to fit between the edge of the uh, module and the workspace. And so I'm still good on focus, so that's not a problem. And I'm gonna turn the air assist on. And I'm gonna turn the air assist all the way up, guys. Uh, and this machine is not quiet, but like I said, it's, a, it's 33 watts of output. You really can't expect it to be too quiet. It's gotta stay cool. Uh, I'll be running this cut at 10 millimeters per second. And the reason I'm doing that is this is Luan, so it does have a tendency to have those little tough pockets. And also it's got some pretty intricate designs and I would rather it just fall clean than me to have to pick at it. So here we go. That's 10 millimeters a second at 100% output, guys. And let's see, let's see how the smoke table does. But the whole, the, the whole way that this system actually works is the fans over there, okay? I've got a four inch exhaust line going to the fan, but I had to choke it down a little bit on my inlet right here uh, because the two by four doesn't allow, of course, for a four inch inlet. So I've kind of got it choked down right there, uh, but it goes over through the four inch line over to a two and a half and then out through the door. So I could more than likely change that, my, my last 10 feet or so of hose out and put it as a four inch and get a lot better, uh, a lot better air movement out of the setup. I'm running the old Vivo Sun fan that I used to have on my secondary enclosure. And uh, it's doing a pretty good job for a, for a cheap, you know, Amazon fan. And you can see it's, it's, it's holding on to the smoke. It's getting it out, blowing it outside and doing what it's supposed to. And that was the, that was the whole purpose of this design was to have it to where I could do stuff on the table like this and not have to worry about just opening the door and smoke going everywhere because I am trying to get this place uh, climate controlled. So I don't want to have to keep opening the door and letting mosquitoes in. <clears throat> the machine's probably due for a cleaning. Uh, I've been running it pretty heavily for the past three days and I haven't cleaned it yet. Uh, but uh, I'm gonna try to get around to that 
in the next day or so if I can, but I want to see how dirty it's getting with all the cutting that I've been doing and just see, just see if it's going to be one of those machines that's high maintenance on the cleaning or not. It doesn't appear to be, but you never know. But as you can see, guys, it's uh, really not that smoky in here. I mean, I'm not even seeing any smoke. The air assist is helping in push the, to push the smoke to the other side of the material. And when it pushes it to the other side of the material, the way that this uh, matrix cutting surface is made, it has those little tiny slits all the way across there. And the air is being pulled down through those slits. And when you lay material on top of this work surface, another thing is that you're gonna generate vacuum on the back of the work per surface. And so even the little slits on this side are kind of being redirected to pull the smoke from over here uh, down into the table, out the fan and blowing it outside. So this is uh, very similar to the, uh, the way that my, my older enclosure works, uh, but this is just kind of my new improved design since Adam Stack created this panel for me, uh, it made life a lot easier because honeycombs, they just allow way more air to flow through than what is needed. And so it's kind of hard to maintain positive pressure on the inlet uh, with a honeycomb. But with these things having those little tiny slits like it does, you can still actually maintain that positive pressure coming down into the box. So benefit, the one benefit that I don't even know if Adam Stack knew that they, uh, they did when they made this thing, but it was a byproduct of their design. And like I said, since I've, since I've adjusted the speeds on this thing, it cuts really nice. Uh, with this setup to the machine's not going to jerk around because that is a really heavy module to be moving at these high speeds. And that was one reason why I didn't want to go too, too uh, fast with the machine was to avoid, you know, moving the machine when it, when it does those abrupt direction changes. But now that I've, I've got the, the jig connected it to the box with all this added weight, plus the material is connected in essence, that shouldn't be a, uh, it shouldn't be a concern. Uh, the machine's not going to be moving fast enough to move the box, the smoke table, and it, it, it shouldn't, you know, shouldn't be a problem. So now I can get away with going a little faster than I could with just the machine sitting on the table. So it looks like it's finishing up. All right, now watch this guys. You know how you normally, you open your door and smoke just like hits you in the face or you pick your material up and there's smoke under it. Not a chance guys, not a chance. Look at the back side. That's the back guys. No smoke damage whatsoever because the smoke is not having an opportunity to sit anywhere. Uh, these pieces, like I said, this is at 10 millimeters a second. My little stick. This is at 10 millimeters a second with this machine. And everything is a clean fall. Now, these pieces do kind of fit snugly. Uh, to be a 30-watt machine, I was thinking the kerf was going to be a lot more noticeable than what it is. But, guys, this, this thing's got a, uh, it's got a really small kerf. I think that little piece fell out on its own. But... There you go, guys. That's the front with the, this is using the stock air assist now. This is the Atom Stack air assist. This is not shop air. Uh, I can run shop air with this machine, but I'm gonna be honest with you. This little pump's doing a good enough job that I really, really haven't had any desire to swap over and in the back side of the cut. I got one little piece of flashback right there. That is where those little teeth, occasionally, those teeth will cause a little yellowing on the back side where it's sitting. Uh, that's nowhere near as much as you would see typically with a honeycomb, but you still, anytime there's a material up close to the bottom of your workpiece, you, you risk having that flashback or you risk getting that little bit of, uh, that little bit of soot that, that kind of gets stuck right there. So that's, that's what's going on on the backside, but nowhere near as bad as with most cutting surfaces. So 
But there you go, guys. 10 millimeters a second, 4.9 millimeter Luon. This is the cheap stuff that everybody talks bad about, and uh, it turned out great. Uh, also, if you'll look at the edges of the cut, edges of the cut, it does have some, some soot, but not terrible. Uh, just to give you a, there you go. So that's not nowhere near what it could be. Uh, the air assist is definitely doing its job. All right, guys, I'm gonna give you a little bit different angle this time. All right, so according to the camera, that should be right. So I'm gonna go ahead and frame just to verify. All right, here we go. Give you a little bit different angle so you can see if you can, uh, you can get a watch, see what the smoke does. No more smoke, guys. That's what I like right there. All right, guys, that's the good enough update for today. Uh, like I said, I've been working on the box today, trying to get it completed. I got some other projects I got to get to working on, but I just wanted to show you guys where I was at as far as the enclosure build, because this is technically just going to be the floor of my enclosure. Uh, I just hadn't got the rest of it built and really don't need to build it until I can do something with the the old enclosure that I have. I'm just gonna repurpose a lot of the hardware and everything and go ahead and build walls for this one. Now that I have the base working, uh, I have the vacuum chamber and everything working the way it's supposed to. And I don't know if you can see, but back in the back corner there, you see the black hose coming out of the back of it. Uh, right now, that's just, the reason I didn't put a four inch line in there too is a lot of the shop vacs that I get don't have a four inch line. So I didn't wanna get the hole too big. I didn't wanna come in through the bottom kind of want to go in through the side. Um, I, the way I have my new enclosure envisioned, that's just going to work a lot better for me. So, but for now, I'm just going to keep running it on the table like this. Now that I've got the smoke contained, I can run it without any issues. The only problem is I do have a line run across the floor and out the garage door. Uh, but I hope this was interesting to you guys. Like I said, Adam Stack sent me out like every piece of the laser set up here. And uh, I'll be dropping links in the description if you want to check those guys out. Like I said, I don't know that they knew exactly what they had created when they created the matrix panel with the little slits in the bottom of it. But for us folks that like a downdraft setup is perfect for that because you don't have all those little pieces of debris getting into the bottom of your enclosure. Uh, so that's a big plus. Uh, normally, like with Enclosure Zilla, when I cut little tiny holes out, they always seem to find their way into the bottom of my enclosure. And then I have to get the shop back out and get them out. But with this guy, they don't go anywhere. Any small pieces that come out will be on the plate and you simply have to turn it upside down, give it a couple of good wax and they're done. So it's more of a crumb tray than anything uh, that that part of it I do like and then like I said just drop it back down into the into the box and I'm ready to go again uh, clean up is also a breeze with this thing because you can just spray it down with some cleaner hit it with a good so a good stiff brush rinse it off and uh, dry it and you're good to go so I I'm digging it for the downdraft uh, enclosures guys so you might want to go look at it but there'll be links down below and until next time guys be safe and have a good day